Zombies and ghosts are on the loose here. Welcome to Threed. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Earthbound. Last time, I left you on a cliffhanger, because we got to Threed, and I said, this is my favorite area in the game, but I'll tell you why next time, and I will do that this time, because this time is last episode's next time, if that makes sense. Now, the sad thing is that I was leaving myself on a cliffhanger as well, because... I wasn't- I knew at that time that I wasn't going to be recording Earthbound for quite some time. And, by the way, I need Escargo Express to get rid of the pencil eraser, because we won't need it for a little while. And then the backstage pass, because we won't need that for a long time, if ever. And then finally the hand aid, because I don't want to use that until it's later in the game. Yes, you are exactly correct. Take them and leave, good sir. Back to what I was saying. I knew I wasn't going to be recording Earthbound for quite some time because I was changing up my recording setup. And since then, I have made gigantic changes. I now have a new HDTV, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and that allows me to record in the room that I normally edit on in with my powerful computer. So no more recording lag for me. Um, I also was a couple of, actually quite a few, Elgato Gaming Software HD updates behind, which I didn't realize that, and it caused some lag. So that was a thing, and then I optimized some settings, and like, it's pretty much Pal Plays 2.0. Hopefully you won't notice anything, because what it was before seemed to be good. It sounded good in my opinion, and it looked good. It did look great, uh, and there should be no aesthetic change. It should just be some, you know, quality of life things that allow me to record episodes a little bit easier. Uh, let's see. Anything else? I don't think so. Hard hat, insecticide spray, don't need that. Copper bracelet, that's, <laughs> that's trash. Uh, and let's, that's good. Let's deposit these things back. Deposit... And you can take back my $400. In fact, uh, I think that it would be best if I kept 70 of that. 71. Yeah, just in case. Because if I, if I get a status ailment that I can't cure with, with healing alpha, I'm going to need to go to a hospital. And the charge for that is $70. So I guess I could tell you what I'm doing this time. <laughs> Let me act like the, the past couple paragraphs and walls of verbally texty text didn't happen. This time, we're going to be seeing what's up with three because there is something up. And judging by what this guy says, there are zombies and ghosts. Not zombie ghosts, because they all left the place. But zombies and ghosts, which is arguably better? I mean, I'd rather deal with zombies and ghosts than zombie ghosts. That seems kind of excessive. How can you smile like that in a dangerous place like this? I don't know. You tell me. You are you see, seem to be the wizened grandma who's walking around even though there are zombies out. The headquarters of the Zombie Relief Corps is in the center of the circuit in, is in the circus tent at the center of town. We want to crush the zombies. Except I think they'll crush us. Mm-hmm. So, center of town as in here? Well, there's the there's the circus tent. Interesting. What about you? This town seems very dark, right? The people are mostly living at the center of town. I wonder how we should get the town back from the zombies. Actually, you know, these are probably not zombies. These are zombies because this is a lighthearted game and we should treat a zombie apocalypse as if it's some big joke. Ha ha ha. I, I, there's a rumor that there's an underground path at the edge of the graveyard that takes you somewhere. When you get through the path, you'll meet a dirty, stinky, ugly, powerful monster. I wet my pants just thinking about it. Uh, you should probably get that checked out because I believe that's a condition. It has nothing related to monsters, but I believe wetting your pants is a condition that you should get checked out. After all this is done, just head to the hospital, bring 70 bucks because that's like the universal hospital cost, and get yourself, get yourself suited up right. Something you can <laughs> depend on. Yeah. I'm so scared of the zombies. I spent all my time running from them. I can't even get home. I'm sorry, Wally Jr. Possibly Junior Jr. Because he's very young. He looks like... He looks a lot like Ninten. Goodness sakes. Look at that. That's like straight up Ninten. 
I mean, if he faces the screen again, you'll see. That's... He looks so much like Ninten. Look at that. That's insane. He's like Ninten. That's awesome. I mean, it probably wasn't intended. It's just the art style of the game. And by art style, I mean pixelated stuff. But it looks like Ninten. Shh. Don't talk so loud. What do you want? Uh, I want to buy. I got what you need. He has a toy air gun, a bomb, a bottle rocket, and a rust promoter. I've explained two of those, but there's a toy air gun and a bottle rocket that we can't do anything with yet. Emphasis on yet. We will at some point, just not right now. Just remember this guy for later. So that's everything. Keep on the watch for bad guys. Okay, that guy's wearing camo, he has like a buzz cut and jetpack, so he's pretty cool, but he's behind a building, which is sketchy. The Zambies are slowly advancing towards the tent. Everyone, I repeat, the Zambies are on the move. I'm glad you're going to help us, but you're pretty young. Why don't we get all of the zombies in this tent and then set it on fire? We may get all munched before we have a chance to do anything. How can we defeat the Zambies? Oh, uh, I just don't know. These guys seem to be at their wit's end for ideas. Although the the setting the tent on fire thing is pretty is a pretty good idea. I like that. I mean, if you if you work out the kinks to that, you could maybe, I don't know, shield this. If you all hole up in here and then shield this and then like have oxygen cha tanks from the hospital and then throw matches in here and kerosene when the zombies come in, I think that's a good idea. You guys should work on that. Now, the only lead we seem to have thus far is that there is a secret entrance to a secret tunnel at the end of the graveyard, or edge of the graveyard, and I think we should work off of that. That seems like a solid theory, and the fact that there is a strange, powerful monster seems to be the description of a sanctuary boss, so we'll go that direction. So I'm skirting the edge of the graveyard, but we'll be interrupted, as always, by Camera Guy. But, since he's in a creepy area, I think it's only appropriate that I give him an uh, insanely creepy voice. Pictures taken instantaneously. I'm a photographic genius if I do say so myself. Okay, get ready for an instant memory. Look at the camera. Ready? Say, Fuzzy Pickles. Fuzzy Pickles. Wow, what a great photograph. It will always bring back the fondest of memories. <laughs> so he's creepy too. You, you get it? Cause like we're cre we're in a creepy area. Yeah, that <laughs> that was a joke, guys. That's that's how I joke. Uh, nest dug around the trash can. Let's see here. There's a teddy bear inside. Awesome. I'm a fan of teddy bears, even though they're kind of they kind of get insta killed now. I mean, they're not really taking much damage before they die. Now wait a minute, youngster. I could give you a great hint for just sixty dollars. You'd like a hint, wouldn't you? Uh, no. I this money's for someone else, not you. So you're telling me that you don't want a hint? You're either awfully confident, or sixty dollars is too much to pay. Anyway, a young man like you is very unusual these days. If you happen to need a hint, come on back. I'm here all the time. This is Hint Man, not Hit Man. Hint Man. Uh, you'll find him in various locations in the game. Uh, too few, in my opinion, and you can pay him money to find out where you should be going in the game and the story. Uh, I, okay. I've recorded this episode before. I'm just going to say that now, but uh, it, it failed. Like, there's a really strange recording glitches that scared me half to death that I may have to, like, stop recording for a while because I had no clue what they, what they were. And um, in that episode, or in that take, I got scared half to death by these things. They look like dead people, right? Right? That's what I thought. I never seen. I don't remember the. Sp I didn't remember the sprite. I thought maybe someone had succumbed to the zombies. So I walked closer. And they're not zombies at all. They're actually enemies. That scared me half to death when I fought them. Like Smiling Sam and Handsome Tom. You guys, like, it was a legitimate jump scare. I'm talking Five Nights at Freddy's level frightened pal. It was kind of ridiculous. If I have the failed take, then I might show it while I'm doing this battle, because you just bash these guys into the ground and they're easy, but... 
if I have the failed take, I can show it to you, and then in the process, you can see what the strange recording glitches were. The commentary was fine, but the visuals looked tr atrocious. So let's just keep fighting these guys. They're pretty easy. I mean, they don't really do anything, and they're really flimsy, but... I mean, they're scary. There's a scare factor involved. For the first time you see these guys, or if you don't remember them, they will frighten your pants off, and you will have no pants. Because that's that's, that's what typically happens when you are frightened out of your pants. Huh. You didn't expect that, that I would run around a tree. Alright, so we went around that edge of the graveyard. Let's go to a different edge. That is an enemy we don't want to fight. If you see a ghosty enemy... You typically don't want to fight them, because they have an annoying status ailment called Possession. Yeah, you can get... Okay, that was... They can do that, too. They can actually phase through solid objects, because they're ghosts, and that's what ghosts do. So I would tend to run pretty far away, so they despawn. Okay, he's gone. Yeah, Possession will make a mini-ghost appear on you, I guess. And what it will do... Okay, I'll have to fight this one. What it will do is, typically on turns, it will deal sm a tiny amount of damage to you, but there's a chance that it could solidify you. It's basically Pokemon's flinch, where you won't be able to act for a turn. It's not permanent, it's just a flinch mechanic. But you don't want to use fire on these guys, you typically don't want to use many PSI attacks, you want to bash them. They're very weak to bashes, and oh thank goodness he tried to do the teddy bear. These things aren't dangerous, they're just annoying. Because you have to go to a hospital in order to cure the possession, and if you don't, you're going to be solidified on some turns, and it's completely random. Now, uh, I, those two silver trash cans are actually enemies, so you want to avoid them. They're not powerful enemies, but they are enemies. And you can tell the difference between a, <laughs> a friendly trash can and a hostile one by their color. The real ones are actually just kind of a uh, greenish color, but the other ones are clean. You'd think it'd be the other way around, but it's not. So here's the edge of the graveyard. He stares into your soul, soul, soul. He looks you over, over, over. These are the Zambies. They won't fight you, strangely enough. They just stare into your soul and look you over. So since they're not fighting me, I won't fight them. They're cur they're polite. Uh, they're polite zombies. I mean, if you f if you saw a zombie, right, you it would freak you out enough. But if it doesn't attack you, I mean, I guess you could be bros. They're probably not that bad. And if they don't say anything, I mean, that's ar arguably worse. But they don't fight. I mean, you could probably be bros. What are you What are you doing? Take a look at that chick in front of the hotel. Regardless of some of the people I've seen her hanging out with, I think I'd like to spend some time with her. Uh, what chick? Oh. <laughs> oh. Well then. That, this is a thing. Once again, let me re remind you that no matter what happens next, this game is still rated T for teen. Okay, she's in the hotel now. Uh, real quick, I'm curious, because I have not gotten a level up the, in this episode how close we are and eh, we're pretty far away I I kind of want to fight another enemy uh, let's see how far are we on time oh <laughs> I looked down and was looking at the time and I didn't realize that we were initiated upon where did they come from I didn't see them when I looked down at the time Okay, well, I guess I got my battle after all. Uh, Ness, could you do me a favor, bro? Uh, just heal up Paula. And Paula... I'm kind of... You know what? I'm... I really want to. Let's try use, th use Thunder. Thunder, did it hit? No, it didn't. Wonderful. Hypnosis Alpha makes Ness fall asleep. Oh, boy. Okay, uh, Paula... I mean, I could pr have her pray, and it will do a random effect, but instead... I think Paula should eat. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Ew, this is actually a really bad situation because the bread roll doesn't heal for that much, and 
Ness is asleep, which I can't cure. This is actually pretty bad. I, I need to, <laughs> I need to fix my uh, my situation where I'm looking down at a timer. This is bad. Okay, thirty reeling. Ness woke up. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Ness. Thank you so much that you're like a sleeper. Uh, Offense. Let's use just a bash attack. Polly, you can use a PSI Thunder because I think that you might kill them in now instantly. You did you? You did a lot of damage. I'm glad that it hit. Ness attacks does 99, 96. He uses the pumpkin seeds. I'm gonna do this again. And pull up just because I like you. You can use this again. It hit again, and it did another 85 damage, and made Handsome Tom stop moving. And now Ness will take out the Pumpkin Man, or Trick or Treat Kid, whichever you prefer. Okay, well, moral of the story, don't look down at the timer. <laughs> Especially when the timer is actually your computer, and you need to, you need to actually get a, a proper timer. That's the first thing I need to do with this new setup. I mean, this first episode is, I mean, it's a kind of a test as well because of the strange recording glitches, but it's also, you know, it's, I'm curious. I'm, I'm curious to see how this is going to work out. It might be a lot easier, I don't know. Putrid Moldy Man, what are you going to do? Nothing? Because you're actually an easy enemy. Uh, we can take out the Putrid Moldy Man first because he's putrid and he's actually pretty easy. And they're just going to be attacking my teddy bear. Putrid Moldy Man is about down. Putrid Moldy Man still alive. Putrid Moldy Man is dead. Why do I keep saying that name? Because I kind of like the combination of Putrid Moldy Man. It, it kind of rolls off the tongue. I mean, guys, say it. Putrid Moldy Man. It sounds cool. Okay, Smelly Ghost, you have n not a good of ring, so you're going to die. And my bash attacks are doing nothing. So let's go and have Ness bash again and have... Paul use PSI Freeze because most of the enemies in this area are weak to P uh, PSI Fire because they're ghosts and fire works on ghosts because I know things. But PSI Freeze can work very well as well. And does it here? Yes, it does. Does a lot of damage and solidifies him. So he won't be acting this turn. Once again, it's a flinch, me a flinch mechanic that will make them not be able to act on one turn. And there he goes. He didn't cause much trouble. It's the zombie possessors you don't want to fight, and those are the white ghosty things. Uh, Paul's level's now 16. Oh baby, offense went up by 4. Oh baby, speed went up by 3. Guts went up by 2. IQ went up by 2. Maximum HP went up by 3. That rocks! Maximum PP went up by 10. That's a good level up. Uh, Ness is pretty close as well, so before this episode ends, I want to get Ness a level. Just so I have some semblance of progress. And once again, since it's so long since I've recorded, I failed... Zombie Possessor. I failed to show you guys the stats at the beginning of the episode. I will make a habit of that. It... I have been, but... It's because I haven't... You know, I haven't recorded in a while. Oh, you're, you're, you're an enemy. I can fight you. You are a no-good fly, which you are no good because you are a very weak enemy. Uh, Paula, use... Freeze beta on the smelly ghost. Notice that Paul is moving first on every turn that she acts. This is this is actually key because she is now faster than Ness without her great charm. Like if I took it off her, she would still be faster than him. And that's important because even though she isn't a healer, she will be dealing damage very, very quickly, and before the other enemies. So if she's low on health, many times using a psychic ability can save you before she would be killed. Now the smelly ghost is low, so I just th I think I can keep bashing because it will be dead. There it is, and that will probably give Ness a level up. If it doesn't, I'll be highly surprised. Ness's level is now 22. Oh baby, offense went up by three, speed went up by one, maximum HP went up by two, maximum PP went up by one. Ness realized the power of PSI Rock and Beta. That's why I wanted here, and that's why I wanted him to get a level up. PSI Rockin' Beta. That is the second level of PSI Rockin', and look at the cost comparison here. Alpha costs 10. Beta costs 14. Now look at the damage. They, they both do the same exact thing, but the damage is different. Um, so 10 to 14, that's not a giant step up, which is good. Uh, and damage for, uh, for Alpha, I sound like I'm 
being a cartoon character. Ba dee ba dee ba dee. Uh, this does 50 damage, and Beta does 180. So you're dealing almost four times more damage for only four more PP. That's that's something I need to point out because Ness, his few psychic abilities scale extremely well into the late game. Even okay, that fly was kind of cir flying circles around me, literally. In fact, let's use that now. Uh, we saw that creepy woman, but I just wanted to get another level up, and then I need to kill these enemies. Paula, go ahead and attack him. So watch the amount of damage that this does. This will probably insta-kill all the enemies on screen. Ness tried PSI Rock and Beta, and it has a new animation and does a ton of damage to all the enemies on screen. So this is, this is a pretty powerful move, and I will be using this a lot. Now, with those battles out of the way and time wasted but levels gained, let's go and see that very... I don't know if this is even a term to describe someone. Uh, that saucy woman, because that's... I, I make up words here on Pal Place. I make up words and I don't take names because that's not how I do. I'm not a thief. I just make names. Sorry to keep you waiting. I have, I've heard that you should always leave them wanting more. And that's what Ness did here. But I'm not sure if I should... I should maybe permanently, permanently leave her wanting more because this is creepy music. This is a creepy scene as well. This woman is obviously luring Ness, poor, innocent Ness, into a defenseless position. Like, this is grade A creepy. Let's go into the other room, because I take door number two. See, this isn't creepy, but she's creepy. Be careful while walking around outside, especially near the graveyard. I don't think it's the graveyard that I have to worry about right now. I think it's this woman who's awfully awfully anxious to have me go into her her apartment <sighs> you know what me i would totally like run i would so run away from this but ness is in his early teen years he doesn't know better so he's going to go in oh snap Uh-oh, you're losing consciousness. What could be the fate of Ness and his friend? Um... This doesn't look good. We're either deep underground or we are in a pocket universe or something stomach. Because this totally looks like something stomach from like Four Swords Adventures. Let's try the door. The door is locked. That's not good. I'm calling out to you who I've never met. I'm calling to our friend who we've never met. Jeff, Jeff, we need your help. I am Paula and I am with Ness, another friend. We are trying to contact you. Winters, a small country to the north. Oh, snap. Snowwood Boarding House. I am Paula, and I am with another friend, Ness. We are trying to contact you. If you can hear me, please wake up and head south. Only you, though far away, can save us, Jeff. Please hear my call and begin heading south. Jeff, you are a friend who we've never met, but you are our one and only hope. This is Jeff, the third companion of the game, and he is all on his own, or at least not really, but Ness and Paula are in trouble, and even though he looks like a geek, he will be a powerful ally, and next time, we will be heading out this door. Jeff, 
Where are you going in the middle of the night? You know the dorm rules, right? If you get caught, you'll be punished big time. But what's wrong, Jeff? Alright. There must be some reason that I don't understand. I won't stop you. But it's dangerous to leave without taking anything along. Hey, I think there's some stuff in the locker room that you should get. I'll help you get out of here. Tony joined you! So we have... This is... Well, I guess I should give him an introduction. This... It's kind of weird. They're oddly face-to-face. -face. I'm trying to... Face him. That's really awkward, but... Let me, there, you can see his face, at least. I'm just trying to show him off. This is Tony, Jeff's best friend and roommate in Snowwood Boarding House. And next time in Pal Plays Earthbound, we will be trying to get out of the boarding house, heading south to another country, Eagle Land. We're in winters right now, which, like I said, is another country. It's, I guess, Canada? So it's a barren, sparse... <laughs> I'm not going to carry that further and say Wasteland, but I was going to say Wasteland. And we're going to be heading down to Eagle Land, the land of... I guess I can justify my first insult and insult both countries equally because equality. The land of sin. <laughs> so, I release new episodes of Earthbound Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. I will see you guys then, and I will discuss why this era, time of the game is my favorite next time. Because the reason why I held off this episode was that this needed to happen for me to explain it. Otherwise, it would just have been a half-baked explanation that wouldn't hold a lot of water. So I'll see you guys next time where I will talk about why this 3 is my favorite time of the game. Thank you.